Hey, it's Al Langelo from A Plus Racing, bringing you another video how to put your Miata on the front line, or maybe just keep it alive. Hey, if you remember on our 49 car, we replaced the inner tie rod in in the last video. So what this video is going to be about is how to set the alignment, especially if you're at home with very few tools. Now, in this alignment, I am going to be using toe plates, okay? You can buy toe plates fairly inexpensive from Summit Racing. A lot of race shops carry them. Um, we have one at the track. I have one here at home, and we constantly use it for a quick alignment on just setting toe, all right? Being that we had a tie rod problem with this car, that affects the toe, and it doesn't affect the camber or caster. So I know that the toe is probably pretty close because I remember I counted 19 turns on that outer tie rod end. So I'm pretty close to the alignment, but I'm not perfect, and I want to make it perfect. So, But I don't have an alignment machine here. I don't have a $25,000, $30,000 alignment machine sitting here. I got one in school, and we can use that one, but we're kind of in a pinch, and this car needs to go to the track tonight. All right, so let me show you how the toe plates work. It's pretty easy. In my opinion, it's not the most accurate way of getting the alignment done, but it's going to get it close. All right, so what are toe plates? These are toe plates, okay? And it comes with a couple of tape measures. So, and it's really easy to set these up. So let me show you how we do it. I'm going to take the tape measures off, and there's two plates. And one's going to go on that side, and one goes on this side. So come around here and look what I'm doing. So I'm going to set the toe plate here, and then I'm going to line up this oblong hole right here, okay, dead center of the rim, okay? And then I do the same thing for the other side. So I set it there, and I, I make sure that it's dead center there. All right, so the next step is I'm going to take a tape measure and I'm going to run it all the way to the other side okay and then I'm going to put it on the top slot on the other side I set it there okay then I'm going to do the same thing with this one so I'm going to set it over there And I'm going to set it on the top slot on this side. Okay, now I come back to this side and I put this tape in the top slot. Okay, I'm going to bring it down like that. I'm going to put this tape in the top slot. I'm going to bring it like that. Okay, now I'm going to pull them back. I'm going to see where we're at. Okay, so the front is at 65 and it looks like 3 eighths. And the rear is at 65 and a half, okay? Now, yep, ideally, I would want somewhere around an eighth of an inch towed out, a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch towed out. And what I would do is, <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but... I nailed it. I, it never happens, all right? I counted 19 turns on that tie rod end and put it back in and put it in place, and guess what? This, this is an eighth of an inch towed out, and this is exactly where I want it. So if I look at it, we're at 65. Oh, maybe we're towed in. So we're at 65 and 3 eighths. This one is at 65 and a half. So yeah, it is towed in, so we can move it. All right, so right now, it's, it's, it's in like this. I want it to be towed out a little bit, okay? So yeah, I didn't hit it perfect, but I'm pretty close. So what I'm gonna do is, I know that I worked on that side. I'm gonna get under the car, and I'm gonna turn the, the tie rod in so that I unthread it, and that it's gonna make that wheel point more towed out. So towed out is pointing that direction, towed in is pointing to the inside. So all I've gotta do is, I still left that, that lock nut loose on the tie rod end. So all I got to do is grab a pair of pliers and twist it. Okay. So here's my pliers. And let's go down here and I'll show you. My, my lovely wife is filming, so that's nice of her. Okay, so there's my inner tie rod end. And I want to unturn it. So I'm just going to grab it with a pair of pliers. And I'm going to untwist it a few turns.
I'm going to open this up. I see this one has a slot in it that I could also put a wrench. If I can't get it with this. It might be a 10 or 12. Let me grab a wrench. It seems like it's pretty stiff. I'm going to grab a 10 and a 12. 12 and a 10. I think it's one of these. Okay. I think it's a 12. Yep. Jam that's loose. All right. So I'm unthreading it from the tie rod end because I want this tire to point out a little bit more. Okay, let's check our work. Let's see where we're at. All right, so I'm coming back to here. And I am at just at 65 and a half. And this side is at 65 and a half. So right now I'm at zero, but I want a little towed out. Al, why do you want towed out? Well, in my experience, if you're towed a little out on the back and towed in a little bit in on the, I'm sorry, if you towed out a little bit on the front, towed in a little bit on the rear, the car seems more stable going into turns. Now, I like to run zero, only for the fact that I, the, the, I don't, I'm okay if the car feels a little loose and squirrely, but it does make the car a little faster if you're running zero front and rear. It just makes the car squirrely. Okay, so we're just a hair over 65 and a half, and this one is just under 65 and a half. So right now we are towed we're towed out, okay? Yep, so we are towed out. So we're a little under 65 and a half on the rear and we're a hair bit over 65 and a half on the front. So that, that tells me that we're towed out about an eighth of an inch. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back over to this side. I'm gonna grab a couple wrenches here because I think when we changed that tie run and it gave me a different size jam nut, so. Okay, so come on down here. All right, can you see the jam nut right here? So what, I'm gonna, what I've done is I back the jam nut up to the tie rod end. And then all I'm gonna do now is tighten that up. I put my wrench on there. Okay, all right, so that's tight. All right, what'd you think? It was pretty easy, huh? Yeah, I even got an easier way with a Phillips screwdriver and a tape measure, but that's for another video. Hey, if you like my channel, subscribe. These are all kinds of great tips on how to keep your Miata alive and cheap so that you can do it at home yourself. There's nothing hard about working on these cars. I appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel. Love the comments. If you like this channel, give it a thumbs up so you let everybody know that you support my, my YouTube channel. And I'll see you at the racetrack. Bye now.